There are many things to love about the exciting, family-friendly movies produced by Disney Pixar, but one reason they're so great is that they're often more than meets the eye. Today we're going to be exploring some of the most insanely powerful characters from your favorite movie franchises. You won't believe you never considered what these overpowered characters are capable of. But before we take a look at some of the greatest and strongest Disney Pixar characters out there, subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to join our notification squad so you never miss any of our Disney Pixar videos. Jack Jack if you're familiar with the Incredibles franchise, then you know that every member of the Parr family is, well, pretty incredible. These movies focus on a family of superheroes, each with their own unique set of powers. But perhaps one of the most powerful and the youngest member of the family, little Jack-Jack Parr. During the first movie, we couldn't wait to find out just what powers Jack-Jack had. And then, at the end of the movie, we discovered that among other things, he can turn into a terrifying little demon. We mean that in a superhero way, not just because he's a baby, but his fight against Syndrome was just a small preview of his impressive powers. Shapeshifting is definitely his main power, and he takes it to an extreme degree. Edna Mode calls him a polymorph, which means he can not only only look different, but his various forms each come with special abilities of their own. For instance, he can convert his body into a metallic form, making him heavy or dense, or if he wants to become soft and pliable, he can just change into his rubber form, and that's just the beginning. He can easily cross into different dimensions, generating electricity, and even shoot laser beams out of his eyes. Jack-Jack has more powers than the rest of his family, and he's still only a baby. And once he's out of diapers, watch out! Pepita. There was definitely a lot going on in the movie Coco, from ancient traditions to family secrets to awesome musical numbers. We were so entranced by Miguel's journey into the land of the dead that it was easy to underestimate some of the powerful denizens that dwelled there. In the movie, we learn that the citizens of the land of the dead can only exist as long as their families remember them. But the land is also patrolled by beings of immense power, known as Alberige. These spirit guides not only have power in the land of the dead, but they can cross over to the land of the living as well. When Pepita was alive, she was the pet cat of Mama Imelda. But after death, she transformed into an Aberlige, or spirit guy. Sure, Pepita might not be able to sing, but this is one character we wouldn't want to mess with. She has a keen sense of smell, and we see her track Miguel all across the land of the dead. She's also able to fly vast distances, seemingly without tiring, and we definitely wouldn't want to cross paths with her in the heat of battle. The skeletons living in the land of the dead are cool and all, but their spirit guides are immensely more powerful. Charles F. Munt easily the most powerful character from the movie Up, who was on screen for all of 10 minutes, and still managed to make everyone in the audience sob hysterically. We're just kidding. Well, not about the crying part. We're gonna talk about the villain of the movie, Charles F. Muntz, since he was ultimately defeated by an old man, a little boy, a large bird, and a dog. But that would be a mistake. Even Ellie and Carl admired the adventures he went on as he flew his plane all over the world and explored completely uncharted terrain. Not only did he do this for years, but survived in Paradise Falls for ages on his own and managed to get a lot done in the meantime. Sure, he didn't find Kevin, but he did manage to raise a veritable army of loyal dogs and create callers enabling them to communicate. In fact, one of the most insane scenes in the movie was when his dogs pilot airplanes and lead our heroes on an aerial chase. If Munz hadn't lost his mind, sequestered himself in the wilderness, and focused on catching the monster of Paradise Falls, who knows what he could have accomplished. Army of super smart dogs, wow. Lotso. Toy Story 3 is shockingly dark for a movie which is targeted at children. The most disturbing character of all is named Lotso Huggin' Bear, but don't let his cute name or charming strawberry scent fool you, no no. In the first Toy Story movie, Woody was a kind of villain himself. He was so jealous of Buzz Lightyear that he shoved him out a window. That was pretty twisted, but it's nothing compared to what Lotso has accomplished during his time at the daycare. He runs the daycare with an iron fist, and anyone who doesn't like it gets sent to the dreaded caterpillar room to essentially be tortured by toddlers. Toddlers are torture, that's for sure. When Buzz dares to question his methods, Lotso finds his user manual and uses it to control him. He makes Buzz imprison the very friends he was trying to protect and tells all the toys that nobody ever loved them or will ever love them. Yikes, all of this is getting pretty grim for a children's movie. Lotso makes Sid look like a sweet, well-adjusted child. And then, of course, we have the infamous scene where Lotso just leaves everyone to die in the incinerator. He was so frighteningly awful that a company selling lots of hugs toy bears tried to sue Disney for besmirching their merchandise. Eve. Wall-E was a movie which managed to both be totally adorable and completely terrifying at the same time. Disney Pixar is just really great at walking that fine line, apparently. In the movie, we meet an extraterrestrial vegetation evaluator, better known as Eve. She's sent to Earth on a scanning mission, but she's more than equipped to handle herself. Not only is this adorably unassuming robot capable of zooming around at high speeds, she's also packing a quasar ion cannon. This seems a little extreme for a creature who's supposed to be gathering samples. But if you think about it, Eve packing such serious heat makes a certain amount of sense. 
After all, she went on a long and complex mission, and it would be a waste if she was taken out by a hostile robot. Equipping her with advanced weaponry was probably easier than building another Eve and sending it on another mission. Eve may look sweet and may be capable of forming a bond with Wally, but she could also easily defeat a human, and we mean a human in relatively good shape, not the humans as we see them in the movie Wally. Ugh. Gross. Her advanced weapon recombined with the aggressive temperament she displays at the beginning of the movie makes her a serious threat. Look at Wally. Yeah. Bruce. Don't be fooled by his charming smile. Bruce by Finding Nemo is a fearsome great white shark, and these creatures aren't known for being great at making friends. They're great at being apex predators, top of the food chain and all that. There's a reason it was this terrifying breed of shark that was depicted in the movie Jaws. In Finding Nemo, we see Bruce react when Dory bleeds the slightest bit, and this isn't an exaggeration. If anything, the movie undersells just how sensitive the nose of a great white shark is when there's blood in the water. Bruce would have been able to detect a single drop of blood in 25 gallons of water, and can sense the presence of blood from up to three miles away. And the odds of a blue tang or a clownfish being able to outswim a shark like Bruce is laughable. These creatures can swim up to 15 miles per hour, and they're absolutely enormous. It's likely these fish wouldn't even see Bruce coming, since his coloring helps him blend into the ocean water. On average, great white sharks are about 15 to 20 feet long and can weigh over 5,000 pounds. It's great that Bruce believes fish are friends and not food, but this still doesn't mean we would want to go swimming with him. Kevin. We already discussed the nefarious Charles F. Muntz, but now let's look at one of the other underestimated characters from Up, Kevin. Okay, so maybe Kevin isn't the most intelligent creature on the planet, but she's certainly smart enough to have evaded Muntz and his legion of canines for all of this time. Kevin is 13 feet tall, making her even taller than an ostrich, which grows up to 9 feet tall. Although they may be sort of strange looking, it would be a grave mistake to underestimate how powerful these birds can be. Ostriches can sprint up to 43 miles per hour and run over long distances or up to 31 miles an hour. In just a single stride, an ostrich can cover 16 feet of distance. Just imagine how fast the even taller Kevin can run. Ostriches are also fearsome fighters, able to take down predators like lions by kicking their legs. Sully The Monsters, Inc. franchise made us all think carefully about the various monsters we feared when we were children. In the first movie, we learned that monsters are actually afraid of being contaminated by us, which makes them not quite as scary as we thought. But let's not forget that they're still absolutely terrifying and powerful. Pete Docter is a writer, known for some of our favorite Pixar movies, including Up! Inside out and Monsters, Inc. According to Doctor, the character of Sully presented something of a challenge. After all, he was trying to get audiences to fall in love with a character who's literally a monster and terrorizes children. Sure, he turns out to be a nice guy at heart, but this doesn't mean he couldn't do some serious damage. He's massively strong and powerful, with fearsome claws and teeth. The design for his character is based on a prehistoric giant ground sloth, which is another creature we definitely wouldn't want lurking in our closet. Not that it would fit, anyway. According to Dr. Sully was carefully designed to look like he could be the top scarer, and they did a pretty good job, because he wouldn't have to be a toddler to think all of those claws and fangs look pretty intimidating. At least Sully has a good personality, which is why we're able to sleep soundly at night. Meridia it took us long enough, but we finally got a female protagonist in a Pixar film. We love Pixar movies as much as the next person, but even we have to admit the preponderance of male characters has always been a bit bothersome. So when we were finally given a heroine to root for, it's no surprise they made her incredibly powerful. Sure, we love that Meridia isn't waiting around for no man, but that's hardly surprising considering the fact that she's only 16 years old. Most teenagers aren't eager to bind themselves to someone for the rest of their lives. Even from the beginning, we knew Meridia was powerful, seeing as how she successfully fled the vicious bear Mordu when she was only six. Then as a teenager, she beats everyone in an archery contest because she wants to win her own hand in marriage. That's a bit of a stretch, but uh, all right. Later, when the clans are on the brink of an all-out war, she declares that she and all the other firstborn should be able to marry whoever and whenever they want, and apparently all the clans agree. This seems way too convenient, and as awesome as Meridia is, we have to wonder why everyone suddenly decides her word is law on this matter. Edna Mode Edna Mode from the Incredibles franchise may not have any superpowers herself, but that doesn't mean she isn't exceptionally strong in her own way. We could go on and on about her infamous attitude and hilariously catty comments, but for now we're going to focus on her incredible sense of fashion. If you're a fan of superhero movies, you probably remember what it looks like when Peter Parker has to make his own Spider-Man costume. Coming up with a functional, practical, powerful outfit is way harder than it looks. In addition to having an insane amount of money and resources, you also need to have an in-depth knowledge and understanding of tons of different superpowers. We see Edna create a ton of different outfits for a wide variety of different superpowers, and it takes her practically no time at all. Just think about the fact that normal, non-superhuman clothing has to undergo tons of testing, and let that put Edna's accomplishments into perspective. Her amazing powers of design go far beyond not adding capes to things. 
No capes! If it wasn't for her creations, our favorite heroes wouldn't be able to fight anywhere near as effectively as they do. If you think about it, Edna is the one to have to thank for our heroes being able to use their powers without worrying about destroying the fabric. Because really, it's all about the fashion at the end of the day. Now that we've given you our picks, tell us about who you think is the most powerful Disney Pixar character in the comments section below. After you're done stating your case, be sure to click on the subscribe button for more Disney Pixar videos from us here at CBR. Oh, you're welcome! Thanks for watching.